Sam. Lipsal 500 is one of the best races of the year. So much history there. Everyone's out to make a big statement first race of the year. And hopefully it's the, the Ford Falcons, but Triple A've got a great record. HRT have got a great record. Me, because I'm the fastest. Oh, no, I should say that. <laughs> yeah, boom, sorry. You come out of pre-season, you go into a concrete canyon. Oh, he's gone into the wall! Straight into the wall! The heat of the weekend, everything is just exhausting. It's a real battle out there, 250 kilometres on the Sunday. It shows who's been working hardest on the off-season. Pepsi and Max crew, hopefully for the win. I've won there once before, I would love to do it again. Crypto will be very competitive. Make a good politician, James Moffat, wouldn't he? Ask any driver who's going to win. The first answer is me, but everything does point to Triple Eight, even in their eyes, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely, mate. No, they look very, very strong. Those guys. Uh, Jamie's qualifying yesterday, and just the experience in those long, long races. You know, being crafty, getting the pit stops right, all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, it's good to see the drivers having a bit of banter there, obviously. What about your tip then, from what you've seen so far in qualifying and practice? Well, I think it's going to be hard to go past Jamie, but uh, you got little James Courtney sitting in there, two good qualies there. Van Gisbergen's obviously in there, so you know, there's a it's a quality field, so to pick a winner, and it is my first weekend in V8, mate, so it's going to be hard for me to pick a winner, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to... I'm really looking forward to seeing how the race is going to unfold and, and, and starting to get a form card going. Well, the cool thing about this weekend is they get three chances with the three races now, although the way that the Clipsal's always been, the overall winner is crowned on the Sunday. That's when you get the okay. big trophy. The Clipsal winner, whoever finishes first on Sunday, is named the overall winner, and in that case, it is James Courtney, who, as you mentioned, has qualified very well, so he's the reigning Clipsal champion. Let's see who can knock him off this weekend. Two races still to come this afternoon and the big one tomorrow, but we're going to get into some V8 Utes now. I know yeah. you love to see these guys because they're just wild and crazy. Their second race and your commentators are Paul Morris, the dude, with Chad Nalen. To the grid. It's Roel Harris alongside Chris Walton. Adam Mardrum, I thought he might be sneaking into the front row. Wasn't going to happen. He'll be starting alongside his teammate Craig Dante. Some big heavy hitters at the front here, including Hansford and Miedeke. David Cedars, he's made the switch to a Holden, not having any luck this weekend with some steering dramas. Yeah, steering dramas. The switch to the GM product hurt him badly. A number of cars overheating yesterday. Uh, Fisher, Miedeke, Mark, Jane all had engine temps yes. of 130 degrees. Big pack. In, in uh, dirty air, you're going to get a hot car. Troy Dontis, that's the uh, identical twin brother of Craig, racing here this week and making his return. Andrew Nichols in the team clean car with a lot of work to do off the back of the grid. So it's going to be a hot day at the office. It'll be an eight-lap race. Myself alongside Paul Morris joining you. And the big names to watch out for further back include McLeod, Nathan Pretty, and uh, also we've got David Cedars back there. Race two of the Utes, Clipsal 500 Adelaide. This Adelaide Parkland Street Circuit's about to come to life with the sound of V8s. Let's get into it. It's going to be Walton in the Renko Ute alongside the Holidays for Life Ford of his good buddy, Royal Harris. Very yeah, even jump. jump. Harris maybe with a slight advantage. Some flags in the back for a stall car, but everyone misses him. And we're off. Look at Cedars. He's on the outside of Hanson on their way down towards Turn 1. Marjoram launches the Ute off-road style across the centre chicane. And he comes back into position three in front of his teammate. Harris on the offensive down towards turn four. Oh, that's driving super defensive up against the wall. And some locked up tyres. And one or two guys getting punted off. Cam that's Wilson. Cam Wilson. For the better part, though, I'll call that a clean start for the Utes. Pretty clean. You get offline there on the dirty part of the track, and the only way you can stop is to use someone else. So <laughs> acceptable conduct. <laughs> Oh dear, we do have some damage though for Mason Barbera. Everyone's beating up on this kid. He's 17 years old out of New Zealand and race, well lap one of every single race so far, someone seems to pick him off. Happened yes. in Sydney. Here we go through turn eight. Oh, lock ups for Dantas and also Marjoram, but they get it pulled up in time for turn nine. Run cleanly through that extremely fast and wild sweeper in cars that suffer bad understeer on cold tyres. That is a daunting corner. It's a very close train at the moment as Harris has not managed to shake the pack of hard charging tray backs behind him. Marjoram clips the kerb at the inside at 13, unsettled 
The first of the Holdens, but he managed to get it stopped at 14. Meadicky looks to the inside of Hansford, not quite there. Oh, and a little hip and shoulder for Jeremy Gray, courtesy of Nathan Pretty. He's these two are going to go side by side all the way downtown towards the centre chicane. Who's going to left? Neither Too is wide. the answer. And we're still side by side. Oh! Eventually, Pretty would take that spot, and it's worked out have nicely. As the boys go three wide to turn four. Kim Jane coming in on the action here too. And the fast up approaching a... McNally, who's desperate to make up for yesterday. Yeah, I reckon he's going to be pretty good. He had really good car speed early on yesterday in the race. Picks off Kim Jame easily. Nice work for the Stratco Ute. Is it going to be contacted? And the cleanly. Very nice move <laughs> for the West Aussie. And the experience of Jane knows better to argue that got one. one in the wall there on the left there. Yeah, we've got some waved yellow flags. Apologies, they didn't quite pick up who it was as it was being backed away behind the wall. So no safety car, which is the good news. Marjoram doing a great job staying right on the tail of the Renko Ute. McLeod looks to the inside of Gray. It's not going to happen there. McNally with a real deep move. is nowhere near close enough to make it stick. On board with the local runner of Craig Dontis. He grabbed a podium here last year as he grabs third gear. Will he get fourth in time? He does. So the boys are flat shifting these cars, just jagging the clutch. Flat shifting through the gears. Fourth back to second. Yep. Ryle just eking out a little gap now. Those new front tyres are working for him. The problem will be he'll be on seriously old rubber with no options to go to for the final race. Through centre we go. It's a great, great spot. You need to use all of the kerbs through one, two and three. Great battle, this one's still going on. McNally up the inside, he's brave. It's McLeod, he'll never let someone through, and he doesn't. He can hang tough around the outside here. Kim Jane's just gonna sit back and watch. Andrew Fisher, who had an overheating car He's behind. in there. Oh, oh, very close. <laughs> so McNally does get that spot made. Oh, and McLeod slides out. Welcome back to the Clipsal 500. The Little Tack is on the Honda bikes having some fun. We've got a question from Robin from Melbourne. What's your favourite event on the V8 Supercars calendar? It is for Mark Webber. I'll put it to Mark and we'll get his answer as you keep your hashtag Ask Webber coming on through. Back to the V8 Utes. We'll get an answer after this. Oh, and uh, Oakland does the right thing. Pulls off the racing line. Oh. The leader, he's not giving it up no. yet. This is actually going to get really awkward. Oh, no, I'm not actually that seeing is... any blue flags from either. Big lock up for Cedars at the end of the straight, and this has closed the pack up again. So Oakland's has got caught out. Oh, Ooh, Cedars the in the Hansford. fence with Hansford, and they are buried hard in there. So I have some pretty good experiences. The, 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 the conveyor belt on the tyres actually grabs the car, and it's, you can't get it off. You can grab reverse. You can try and get out of there, and it's... It's the worst feeling in the world. You're sitting there and you're thinking, oh, I've got no car damage. Lucky I'm right to go. I can't go. <laughs> Lucky it didn't happen to you at an important race or anything, Paul. No, no, exactly. <laughs> so hopefully those boys get out of there. We can stay green because the running at the front's good. The killer's right up on the bumper bar here now. Oh, the back end steps Super out. aggressive. There'll be half a chance here at turn four because Walton's got a great exit. Where does Ryle's Harris got to go. He's got to go defensive. He's got to go defensive. It's one corner where you can go defensive. Look how this deep This makes go. him vulnerable for the next complex here. Thankfully, it's a left, and he so can park the car. Ryle's just mid-tracking the thing here, mid-tracking the car, not, not letting the killer have any look in anywhere. Marjoram now sneaking up to the back <laughs> while all this is going on. Oh, the killer's two, loose, but he's fast. These two guys are spending <laughs> their tyres hard. Over here we go, curves. boys. It's on now. We said beforehand, they told you that they were going to use up their friendship today if they needed it. Here it is. Cedars goes sliding out. Oh, Mediki maybe got into the side of Hansen, which started all of that. Yeah, so the, yeah, that's three wide and... Oh, sideways in a big way is Chris Walton. That was a monster slide, drifting through turn eight, and he's locking the rears up using the gearbox to slow the car down. Special racing at the front of the pack. All three of our guys, or the two cars that were stuck in the fence have moved on, so there's no well, local cool. yellows. We want to see this go green all the way. This is developing into a really good battle. And you can see that body language between the two cars. Like, Ryle's straight, the killer's loose. 
They're fast in different parts of the track. They're driving the same car. <laughs> I think tyres is the key <laughs> here, though, with Harris throwing on the extra set that he had available, the extra two uh, tyres that he had available. Medici just bumping on the, you know, beating on the rear bumper there, trying to loosen Dantas up. up. Just letting him know that he's knocking <laughs> on the door and he's coming. Slick Medici. Yeah. Dantas has, by the way, a five-second penalty coming at the end of the race. Okay, so Slick should know that. He doesn't need to be so so aggressive. And Donta still wants to be defensive though. Oh, smoking. A bit more Morse code on the bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Driving by Braille around turn four and five. And Donta holds on to the fourth position, but he'll be relegated back after the penalties get handed out with one and a half laps to go. Jared McLeod's just been pinged for a curb hop, but he still has one in the bank. Just needs to make sure he doesn't do it on the next lap. He's Mc... hanging, hanging tough in the top ten. McNally's moved up to sixth after starting 19th. Undoubtedly the hard charger. Again through turn eight, the killer super loose. Rolls tight. It just looks like his tyres <laughs> are hurting after qualifying, doing the extra lap in the top two shootout. Man, the ice unit was close at the end of the straight. Miniki's made the switch to Matt Stone Racing as well, just like we've seen with Ryle Harris and the Ford proving to show some good speed. It'd be great to see Slick get back to the front. And we're seeing some unusual smoke puffing out of the back of Elliot Barber's ute under brakes oh, okay. here. I'll have a look down at turn 14 and see if it's going to happen again, but not quite sure what's going on there. Look to be coming out of the middle of the tray almost, which is a bit unusual. As the leaders head off for the last lap, Paul, and this is exciting. Can Killer catch up? He'll definitely have a go. Definitely have a go. He's fast through four, five, six. Using up his curb strike, just launches it off the turn one curb there, which allows him to really range up on the back of Ryle. So smart driving there from the Killer. Knows he's got, got a couple of curb stripes up, curb stripes up his uh, sleeve and uses it up on the last lap. Through. The steps we go. Oh dear, we've got Kovacs in the fence. So that's the last turn, I think. So that might be a local yellow. And a he's really up the inside. Time. He's there. Oh, is he going <laughs> to pull it up? There's just no. I don't even think he hit him. That was amazing. Nah, it's good. But he, what it has done, Paul, is ruin his exit. Ruin his exit, but he's um, rolls very quick through this next part of the track. So there's nowhere where you can really freestyle here through that first part of the track. You can. You can. Okay, risk the car, launch the launch it gain some time. How badly does he want it? Because this might be his last chance to pass if there are local blue, uh, local yellow flags coming up in the final sector of the lap. There definitely will be at that last turn, I'd say. Royal Harris backs it into turn 11, grabs the kerb to help the car turn, and Walton's all the way out to the fence. He's not giving up. <laughs> are we seeing any yellow flags? I don't think it matters. The gap is too grand. Oh, oh it's a big one, Cam oh. Wilson. Nasty one. Back in turn That is eight. big, mate. 180 k's in the fence there is not fun. Well, that's smart, Watts, <laughs> and been an exciting race. It's Harris to the flag, two from two in the Utes, and this one pays points. Great work to Ryle Harris and Matt Stone McNally, racing. where's he end up? McNally will end up sixth. So but I, pr I predicted fifth, so he got the sixth. It's, well, he's he, got a fast car. He might get there <laughs> in the end because there's going to be a time penalty handed out. Remember, to Dontis, so McNally so. might actually get that spot. There's Charlie Kovacs, who's lost an argument with the wall, and let's try and dissect what happened here. Richard Mork, no, just no. Yeah. I'd say that's oh. a flat left front. That's, that's a tyre failure. Thing didn't even look like turning, so. You can see how good those tyres work on the outside of the track, just something very simple. Oh, my God, no. Oh, here we go. I can't actually see who that is with the bonnet up. Oh, it's Jared McLeod. Oh my goodness. So I don't even know how he... He's tried to complete the... He was in 10th. That's so he's flying desperate blind. to get home and get some points. And he's tried to go through the second scariest corner in Australian motorsport with his bonnet across his windscreen. Well, I don't, I don't know what you do there. He knows his car's behind him. So if he brakes heavily, he's going to cause an accident. He just had to try and roll through the corner and give some guys room. And then, um, obviously, someone tried to go around the outside. Just no room there. So Harris takes the win. A few more talking points out of race two. And the points go to Ryle Harris. He'll now resume his series lead on trying to become the first ever three-time champ 
in the Australian V8 Ute Series thanks to East Coast Bull Bars. Adam Beachy with a personal best inside the top 10. Excellent work from him. Further down, we've got Troy Dontis who's climbed his way up to be 16th. And Andrew Fisher back in 19th and a bad day and a bad opening round for David Cedars. Behind them, we check out the guys towards the back and a couple of DNFs, including Mason Barbera, the youngest driver in the field, and Jared McLeod with the bonnet covering his view, not making it home. That wraps up race number two for the V8 Utes. They will have one more still to come here at the Clipsall 500 Adelaide. And not surprisingly, the V8 Utes leave a whole stack of mess behind and team carnage. owners are writing checks. Yeah, it's always carnage.